I'm Pastor Leon Pinkett. In the heart of East Baltimore at the corner of East Fayette and Patterson Park Avenue, New Harvest is a diverse, inner city, multicultural, multiracial ministry that focuses on advancing God's kingdom by equipping each member through sound biblical training, an interactive and supportive fellowship, and our consistent and intentional community and outreach efforts. Known for our loving and family atmosphere, New Harvest is exactly the place for you if you desire a fervent, vibrant worship experience for all ages in a compassionate and loving environment. On behalf of Bishop Marcus Aaron Johnson Sr., Evangelist Rone Johnson, and the entire New Harvest family, we invite you to worship, study, or visit with us at New Harvest Ministry. God bless you. I am so grateful that on this day, Bless Baltimore Prayer Motorcade, July the 30th, 2022. Our last Bless Baltimore Motorcade was in 2018. And since then, the pandemic so much has happened. But today, we were able to send out a clarion call and to get well over 200 people through buses and vans and cars to come together from various churches throughout the city and counties and be a part of the Blessed Baltimore Prayer Motorcade. We met with the support of our Baltimore Police Commissioner, Commissioner Harrison. We met at the War Memorial Plaza, left from there, went to a Jewish synagogue, and they came outside and they brought their tradition to us that we could then support them in trusting and believing God in their service. Then we prayed for Baltimore and then left from there, went to Lexington Park, where so much carnage, so much death, so much crime, and we had a service in the park and it was a powerful endeavor. Participation, the former Colonel Russell spoke and edified the name of God. Then we left from there, we went into, into Hollins Ferry Road, that would be South Baltimore, and lift up the name of Jesus with Pastor Tony Draper and her congregation, and the power of God fell there. Then we left from there, and then we went to Lexington, I'm sorry, Light and Conway Street, where the most recent murder took place with one of the squeegee kids. And we were able to meet a squeegee kid, 15 years old, pray for him, encourage him, put money in his hand, and tell him that the God loves him and the church loves him. And he thanked us. Then we left from there, went to North Avenue, where double murder took place this morning. And we had service outside, right on North Avenue, between the courthouse full of people's despair and March Funeral Home, where dead people are taken. And we stood in the middle, the church, anchored to declare that Jesus is the answer. We prayed over the city, and then we prayed for our police commissioner. Then we left there and came to New Harvest, my home church. New Harvest on East Fayette and Patterson Park. And we stood in the yard and we glorified God on a Saturday afternoon. And right while we were doing it, a man was about to overdose right in front of the church. And because we were there, we were able to minister to him, pray for him. And that man that was about to cross over was revived and brought back to life again. All of that because somebody dared to bless Baltimore. And so we'll be doing it again on next year. I believe now that the church recognizes this is on our watch. And so it's not gonna happen by just the police. It's not gonna happen by just Johns Hopkins. No, it's gonna be the church being in the center of the community and leading the way. And where there is death, God will bring life in Jesus' name. Subscribe to New Harvest Ministry and smash that like button and smash the notification bell so you won't miss another video. With the administration, we see you standing on this beautiful 
lot that's been renovated beside the church. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be happening here at New Harvest that Bishop is asking that everyone come and see what's going on. So it's been a few years ago um, now that um, the Lord blessed us with this faith. It used to be a, a, a vacant building, but um, we had the resources to get it demolished and then to clear the space. Um, but it wasn't until recently we really were able to have a vision for what this space could look like and how it could be really used for ministry. Yeah, we had Pentecost Sunday with um, one of our partnering churches and they had it in the courtyard and it was decorated very beautiful outside. And we've had this space for several years and it's overgrown weeds and it wasn't really level. And so, you know, after speaking with you and Bishop, uh, you allowed me to work with the ministry to get this space cultivated, get the ground leveled out, put new sod down. And now it's a space that we can use for ministry, for outdoor services, concerts, and different things like that, just to, uh, for the betterment of the community and the ministry. I mean, it's amazing. All of the different departments within the ministry are already now starting to plan, you know, how we can use the space um, because it's really designed to be a part of our outreach where we can take all of the great things that are happening inside New Harvest Ministries and take them to the outside so that our community, our neighborhood can join in and be a part of it. So um, we're just excited about what God, I mean, you can see how beautiful it is. We're excited about what God has done um, and trust us, we're going to be good stewards of this space um, and let the community see what God is doing inside New Harvest but to see it on the outside. Uh, come out and see what the Lord has done. Uh, he's done some great things here at New Harvest. We want you, you've been a part of it, we want you to continue to be a part of it. So join us on Sunday as we celebrate really uh, the transformation that's happening here at New Harvest as we look at our new space, we look at the renovated spaces, um, and then we want to get feedback from you on how God can uh, move our ministry into this next season. And so come one, come all, Sunday here at New Harvest to see what great things that God, God has done for us. God bless you. See you on Sunday. See you. Action! Subscribe to New Harvest Ministry and smash that like button and smash the notification bell so you won't miss another video.
This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. While the seasons change, our desire and passion to worship our God never changes, for He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. I'm Assistant Pastor Leon Pinkett, and I welcome you to worship with the New Harvest family on our virtual campus on behalf of Bishop Marcus Aaron Johnson Sr. and the entire New Harvest family. We welcome you to join into this worship experience. Whether you're on your laptop, your tablet, your phone, or any other device, we ask you to just lean in and join with us as we worship our eternal God. We pray that you'll be blessed through this worship experience and find richer, deeper walk with our God. God bless you. It is Pentecost Sunday. How many of you are glad to be here in the house of the Lord? The same God that woke you up this morning, started you on your way, clothed you in your right mind, and sent you here to worship Him. Come on, let's give Him glory. I'm going to go right into the prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for all that you have done for us. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and we worship you, dear Lord. Let us walk in the Spirit so that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that ye would. Come on, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us walk in love. Let us walk in joy. Let us walk in peace and long suffering and goodness and mercy. For the Lord has saved us. He has called us unto himself. So let's give him glory for all that he has done. Father, we love you. We thank you for transforming us out of this world into yourself. For you called us out of darkness. And we are grateful. We are thankful. And all we can say is, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For all that you have done. There's not a day that goes by that we should not give God glory for all that he has done. Even in spite of what we have done. He even made a way that we can come back and fellowship with him when we fall into sin. Thanks be to all that God has done for him. was fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them others. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man 
heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Creates and Ar Arabians we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Oh, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at that Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come verse 21 and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, oh hallelujah, shall be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Amen. Praise the Lord, New Harvest. Praise the Lord, New Harvest. This is Pentecost Sunday. We're thanking God for his spirit. Praise the Lord, New Harvest. We welcome you to New Harvest this morning, those who are in the sanctuary, those who decided to join virtually. We thank you for coming this morning and for fellowshipping with us. We just are here to praise God and thank him for his spirit, for not just today, not just on Sunday mornings, but throughout our week, amen, for the things that we deal with and we struggle with. We know that we can pray to the Father and he will drop his spirit on us to give us words, to give us guidance, to give us wisdom, to give us peace. So we're going to thank him for that this morning. Amen.
let us become more aware of your holy presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. 
New Harvest family and friends. We serve a great and mighty God, and we'd like to invite you to help us share the gospel of Jesus Christ with the world. Will you follow me over to thenewharvest.org and you can click on the giving tab or you can use the giving button on the page. Whatever amount you decide to share is greatly appreciated. Our prayer is that God will continue to bless and keep you. Action! Subscribe to New Harvest Ministry and smash that like button and smash the notification bell so you won't miss another video. Turn your hand like a cup and say, Lord, I need the Holy Ghost. Come on, some, come, come on, church. Come on, church. We're living in a very difficult age. If you think we're going to make it in victory on our own, you are sadly mistaken. Turn those hands over and say, Lord, I need the Holy Ghost. Fill me until my cup overflows. Hallelujah. Do you really mean that? then thank him. Thank him. Come on, open your mouth and thank him. And thank the Lord for the Pentecostal fire. Acts 2, 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon this is the good news each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance this morning I want to answer the question what happened at Pentecost what happened at Pentecost let us pray father in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you that you have given us the written Word of God that gives us the history of the church it gives us the history of your dealings with mankind and it tells us your plan, your strategy in bringing a lost world unto yourself. Now, God, we are so grateful that Pentecost is a reality. We're so grateful that the Holy Spirit is real and the Holy Spirit is available. And so we ask you to speak to our hearts on this Pentecost Sunday on this birthday of your church that we will appreciate what happened at Pentecost and then draw relevance to what needs to happen today. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Come on. Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is real. The Holy Ghost is the power of God. Understand that when God created man, man was created without sin. Follow me because all of this will help us to understand the significance of Pentecost and what it needs to mean to us today. Man was created without sin. And because sin was not in the picture, there was nothing impossible for man to accomplish. Nothing. Because the problem in being successful, the problem in being able to achieve is working through sin. Sin opposes victory. Sin opposes success. Sin opposes growth. And so God gave man an assignment. Name all the animals. 
Now, that wasn't just a matter of just picking sounds and ascribing a name. It meant the name had to be directly linked to function and purpose, which meant man needed intelligence. He needed access to information that will allow him to designate species and designate specifics of types of animals. But because there was no sin, he could do it. Whatever information he needed, it was accessible. However, when man sinned, when man disobeyed God, when man ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, man fell. Now, I'll be the first to admit, as a child and even into my adulthood, I always wondered what was the big deal in eating the fruit from the tree other than God said don't do it. Well, right then and there, because God said don't do it, that was the sin right there. But God didn't say don't do it because it was just something he felt like doing. There was a reason. It was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which meant man did not have a knowledge of, he did not have an awareness of sin because it did not exist. It did not exist in the earth realm except through Satan and his angels who had been cast out of heaven and some were immediately locked up in hell until the day of the Lord the day of ultimate judgment. But then there were others that were allowed to roam in the earth. But here's the key, follow me now. The Lord did not send Satan, neither did he send the demons into the earth to go unchecked. He said to man, he said that you are to take dominion over the earth. In other words, you're to rule. And everything is to be subject to you. Follow me now. That meant Satan is subject to you. That means the demons are subject to you. And as long as you're operating apart from sin, you can do whatever you have been assigned to do. You can name the animals. You can have intelligence for the species. You can even keep the devil under control. Look at your neighbor and say the devil was never intended to rule over you. Never. He was never supposed to rule over our homes. He was never supposed to rule over our finances. He was never supposed to control our health. Are you hearing me? That was never God's plan. When God created man, he created him in his image and after his likeness. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. But when man sinned, man lost the ability to accomplish those things that God requires. Now, what was the big deal of eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? I'll tell you what it was. Man had at his disposal the master teacher. Man had as at his disposal. He had the one who could instruct him in all things. To eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was to say, I will acquire the information. I will acquire the intellect apart from God. You see what the problem was? The problem with eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not to get information, but it was to get it without getting it from the master teacher. And I want you to know, knowledge is dangerous apart from God. You don't believe it? Look at how man has made missiles and nuclear weapons that will destroy populations. We just listened last week where Russia sent a missile over into the Ukraine and look at all the devastation because knowledge is dangerous apart from God. Are you hearing me? We can do a lot of things, but if we're not instructed by the master teacher, then what should be for our construction will become our destruction. Let the church say amen. And so because of that, then God 
had to exile man from the Garden of Eden. Why? Because the tree of life was there. And if man ate from the tree of life in a fallen state, he would eternally be lost. Aren't you glad that God so loved the world? that he gave his only begotten son because God did not want us eternally lost or separated from him. He said to man, the day that you eat from this tree, you shall surely die. Well, Adam lived 900 and, and I forget the exact number of years, but 900 some years Adam lived. 930 some years, I believe it was. That's a long time. I thought the day you eat, you will surely die. Well, two things happened the day he ate. The day he ate, death was cut loose in him. Man began to die gradually. Physically, man began to die. He began to decay. But another death happened instantly. His fellowship, his relationship with God Died the day you eat thereof. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is what? And the soul that sinneth, it shall what? This is the word of God. So God was trying to spare man from death. But man, in his rebellion, in his disobedience, proceeded on. So what did God do? God, through Abraham, raised up a people to become, in Moses, a nation. A people. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And as a result of that, then the sons had family. And then Joseph, who became the vice chancellor of Egypt, then allowed them to come into Egypt during the famine. So, a uh, family could become a nation. And then Moses could lead this nation out of an Egyptian captivity so that they could proceed to the promised land. Where are we going with this? Well, God's plan had always been for man to function and for man to operate apart from sin. But here lies the problem. Because man, as a result of sin, is weak. Because man is deficient. I should say mankind, male and female. We are lacking. And so God arranged a system through Israel using the agricultural system as the context. Follow me now. What God did is that God in the Old Testament set up a system that would model what he would do in the New Testament with the church. But he used natural elements to convey a spiritual truth. Are you with me? Follow me now. Listen to this. God knew that natural man needed food. God knew we needed food to eat, right? So the Lord devised a system. You will take a seed. <laughs> you will plant the seed in the soil. You will water the seed. And the seed will then bring forth fruit and a harvest. God was laying the groundwork for a spiritual reality. Plant the seed the word of God, water it, the spirit of God, and it will produce fruit, fruit that will bring life, fruit that will cause from a harvest multitudes to eat. Remember now, the sons of Jacob went into Egypt so they could eat because there was a famine. They would have died. So God says, I'm going to show you how to live, how to survive by planting seeds. 
He was setting the groundwork for what he would do at Pentecost. Listen to this. Israel was instructed that there were three major feasts that all male Jews were to go to Jerusalem to celebrate. These were agricultural feasts. They were to commemorate what God had done for them and to rejoice and to give offerings unto God. Isn't this amazing? So there was a celebration called the Feast of Weeks, W-E-E-K-S, the Feast of Weeks. What is that? This was to commemorate when Israel escaped death in Egypt from the Passover. God is so methodic how he laid this out. He always knew where it was going. And so Israel was told, if you put the blood of the lamb on the door seal, when death walks through Egypt, it won't touch you. He was using a natural phenomena to convey a spiritual truth. He was literally telling them in the Old Testament that there's power in the blood. Ha! He was telling them it flows to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. It's the blood that will give you strength. They didn't know that song, by the way, and they didn't understand as we do redemption, but Jesus in the Old Testament was telling them there's power in the blood. And so anybody that had blood over their door seals, when the deaf angel walked through, guess what? When I see the blood, I will pass over you. I hope you are sitting in this house today and on this virtual campus. I hope your house is covered with the blood. Did you hear what I just said? And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you come into the blood covenant. Covered by the blood. But I'm not perfect. Are you covered by the blood? But I didn't do what I said I was going to do. Are you covered by the blood? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-saving blood of the Lamb? Have your garment, are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Somebody say the blood. And so, the Feast of Weeks, which was seven Sabbaths from Passover. Good God, I reckon that they were to commemorate the beginnings of the latter harvest. They had a first harvest in the spring, and now as they're about to enter into the summer, they would have the beginning of the latter harvest, and they would celebrate this. Isn't it amazing that Jesus chose to die during the season of Passover? Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on, come on. He could have died any time of the year. He could have picked any, meeny, miny, mo. I'll die on this day. But he chose to go to the cross during Passover because the Passover was all about death passing over those that were covered by the blood. And Jesus died so he could shed his blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is what? No remission of sin. The sins can't be remitted. And so Jesus, who not only died during Passover, but three days later, he was raised from the dead. Now follow me now. Paul tells us in Corinthians that Jesus is the first fruits of them that slept. Remember I told you that during these festivals that they would make an offering unto God. So at the beginning of a harvest, they would give God the offering of the top of their, of their harvest. Like we give our tithes, which is the top of what God has given unto us. What is it doing? It's saying, God, first of all, I thank you for the income. And I'm going to give you the top of it because I am trusting you for the rest. I am trusting you to provide for me. I am trusting you you to supply all of my needs. And so the beginning of whatever I have, Lord, it belongs to you. And so Jesus became the first offering unto God. 
hear me somebody what a perfect offering the perfect son of God Jesus Christ doing Passover the resurrection is now being offered unto God so that there would be a seed that could be planted so that there could be fruits so you and I could eat somebody say thank you Jesus Come on, I don't know if you're getting where I'm going with this thing. I don't know if this thing is making sense to you, but we need to understand our faith, and we need to understand the content of it and what makes it what it really is. So now, Jesus not only has died on the cross, has not only been resurrected from the dead, come on, I'm going somewhere with this, but then he ascended. But listen to this. He said to his disciples, wait in Jerusalem. Wait there. Because guess what? When you plant a seed, the crop doesn't come up right away. I said don't come up right away. When you plant the seed, it's got to be watered. The sun has got to shine. All those things have got to happen. So that's why Jesus was crucified and buried the seed was planted. Come on, somebody. But on the third day, the first fruits, he was raised from the dead. So now he's saying to the disciples, if ever you have first fruits, it indicates there's more to come. Look at your neighbor and say, there's more fruit to come. Good God, good God, good God. I know some of you sitting in here and you're thinking about stuff that's going to happen this week and you're thinking about what you're going to do this evening. You better start thinking about the fruits that come after the first fruit. And you need to understand that we represent the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth fruits that are to come. If you only understood. And guess what? In every fruit, there are seeds. In other words, God has given each of us the capacity to plant of ourselves into the soil of faith and produce fruits even for another generation. Do you understand you're not just living for yourself? Do you understand it's not just about you eating? I don't know a parent, a good parent, that would prepare a meal and eat in front of their hungry children and not feed them. But the whole point of us being in here today is that there is a whole population out there that needs to be fed. So we've come in here today so that God could fertilize our soil so that we could produce a harvest because the fields are ripe, but the Lord needs laborers to work in his vineyard. I wish I had some help in here this morning. Somebody that understood what this thing is all about. The Holy God Ghost is all about making sure that the world doesn't die from famine, doesn't die from starvation, that the world doesn't die from a drought. Somebody say hallelujah. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. And so Jesus says to his disciples, you wait in Jerusalem during the feast of weeks, during the Passover season during Pentecost which means 50 days 50 days Jesus raised from the dead walked the earth for 40 days and he taught and he ministered then he says to his disciples now you wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes now I love this part because Elder Foster, uh, I heard you say this years ago in Sunday school, that when they went in Jerusalem, old Peter stood up. Peter said, wait a minute. The scripture says there's supposed to be 12 apostles and Judas is gone. So there's only 11. Let us vote. Let us cast lots so that we can replace Judas missing bishopric. Can I tell you something, church? The Lord ain't never told him to do that. That was Peter. And it sounded like a good plan. Just like for many of us, things that we do, it sounds like a good plan. 
But how many know, except the Lord lead us and guide us, we are wasting time. We're going through the motions. So they voted in the lot between Justice and Matthias. And they said, Lord, show us which one of these two. And the lot fell on Matthias. Now here's the interesting part. Matthias' name was placed on the log to replace Judas. And then you never hear another word about Matthias. Why? Because that was Peter's plan. That was Peter's idea. And we'll know when we're doing the will of God because it will outlive us. It will carry on. There will be destiny to whatever God gives us to do. I wish somebody understood what I'm saying. That folk may not applaud you, but if you're doing what God told you to do, folk may laugh at you. They may talk about you. But I want you to know, long after they're gone, what God gave you to do, it's going to keep on living. Somebody say hallelujah right now. If you want to glorify God, then do those things that are going to outlive you. Do those things that are going to affect generations to come. Do those things that will turn back and say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Let the church say something. Come on, let the church say hallelujah. He said, wait in Jerusalem. So after they voted, and after they did all that, and somebody said, what was all that about? And somebody whispered in the upper room, nothing. That was Peter again. That was Peter again. Peter was very impetuous. Peter was quick. But Peter before the Holy Ghost. Good God, I reckon. He was a follower of Christ. Peter loved Jesus. But Peter needed something that would give him strength where he was weak. Peter needed something to fill in the lack. Peter needed something to build up his deficiency. Peter needed something that Peter did not have on his own. And I want to tell you, look at your neighbor. Just look at whoever's sitting next to you on the virtual campus. Just look who's in the room with you. Just look at him. Now look on the other side, whoever's there. Look at him. Uh-huh. And, and then say, yeah, they'd be all right. But the Holy Ghost makes the difference. Oh, I'm here to tell you right now. Oh, somebody, somebody got it. Somebody got it that quick. I'm trying to tell you that in your best day, the difference of victory is the Holy Ghost. In your best day, the difference in soaring and going above the clouds is the Holy Ghost. You can sit there puffed up in yourself and think you're all that and I can't believe they didn't call my name and they didn't do nothing. you just a puff of wind. But with the Holy Ghost, but with the Holy Ghost, Jesus said, I'll be with you always even until the end of the earth. What was he saying? The Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes, you will not walk alone. When the Holy Ghost come. You will not operate on your own might. When the Holy Ghost come, you don't have to try to remember everything. It'll bring back to your remembrance that which God have taught you. When the Holy Ghost come, you'll hear God whisper. When the Holy Ghost come, it will discern the difference between light and darkness when the Holy Ghost come. The problem today is that we've got too many Christians that are living a life without the Holy Ghost. Somebody Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. When you get a headache, if the first thing you grab is a Tylenol, you've missed the point. And I'm not telling you, don't take Tylenol. I take extra strength Tylenol. Did I do? I think I take it every day. But here's the point. But when I'm reaching for the Tylenol, I'm saying, in the name of Jesus. When I take my medicine in the morning, I say, in the name of Jesus. When I go into the doctor's office, in the name of Jesus. All day, all night, I'm pulling on the Holy Ghost. I'm trusting God who already has gone before me. I'm trusting God who knows everything about everything. I'm trusting God who's everywhere at the same time. I'm trusting God who rules over all things. I'm trusting the Holy Ghost in me the hope of glory somebody say Holy Ghost if your prayer hits the ceiling and falls back down you need to release the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost will take the prayer where you could never take it and it'll get the result that your soul needs somebody say Holy Ghost so whereas the agricultural holiday first fruit is linked to the resurrection and Easter 
the Feast of Weeks is linked to Pentecost. So 50 days after Jesus was planted in the earth, 50 days. Listen, Jesus had to be buried. Because if you take a seed, Deacon Larry, and just put it on top of the soil, it won't produce. You got to bury it. I am crucified with Christ. Huh. I'm, I'm, in baptism, I'm buried in the name of Jesus. If you want to be saved, you got to be buried. You've got to be dead because you only bury that which is dead. But I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to the old life. I'm dead to where I've come from because I'm looking forward to where God has taken me. Somebody say hallelujah. So here's my first point. I'm only going to make three points. I think it's three. Let me see. Yep, three points, and that's it. I'm done. I'm done. Because the reality is the Holy Ghost makes the difference. So what happened at Pentecost? One, Pentecost affirms the promise maker is the promise keeper. Now, you ought to be running around the church right now. Anybody got a promise from God? Huh? But what good is a promise if there isn't one to keep it? You ever had somebody make a promise to you and they didn't keep it? Huh? You ever had somebody to make a commitment to you and they did not come through? Well, I'm trying to tell you here that on Pentecost, this is what Jesus told his disciples. Hear the promise, John 14. Lord, this is enough to just get me all worked up. And I can't take my shirt off. I took the jacket off. And that helped momentarily. But right now, when I finish the run, I'm taking the shirt off. Because water's running everywhere. But it's like fire. Shut up in my... I thank God I have the Holy Ghost. Anybody have the Holy Ghost in the house? I said, does anybody have the Holy Ghost in the house? Some of y'all looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. The Holy Ghost should not be a foreigner. The Holy Ghost should not be strange. The Holy Ghost should be your intimate friend that walks with you every day, sticks to you closer than a brother. After somebody makes a promise to you, the Holy Ghost says, but I'm the real promise maker, and I'm the promise keeper. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. They didn't understand he was talking about the Holy Ghost. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall, here it is, here it is, Bubba, I mean Andre, shall be in you. The difference is that the Holy Ghost becomes God walking outside of me, now dwelling in me. Do you get the difference? In the Old Testament, they had God with them. Jesus was born Emmanuel, God with us. The Holy Ghost is God in us. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Just tap your little belly a little bit. Say, God in me. Listen, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And Jesus said, I shall not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Well, on Pentecost, Jesus came to them. But they were saddened when he told them he was going to leave. What they didn't know was that he was going to return back to them more intimate than he was in those three years he walked with them. Now, it's one thing to have a friend with you, but it's another thing to have a friend in you. You know what that means? That means he can talk to me and nobody else can hear the conversation because he's in me. When I go to sleep at night, he influences my dreams. When I say, Lord, help me, he will remind me that's why I'm here. I am another comforter. You knew me as Jesus in the flesh, walking in the earth, but now you know me as God in the spirit, dwelling 
in you. Literally, and I don't wish this on anybody, but literally, if we were falling over a cliff, he is in us as we are falling. What's the outcome? Somebody said, you're going to hit the bottom. Well, guess what? I'd rather hit the bottom with Jesus in me than to hit the bottom with him outside of me. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? That's why when they were stoning Stephen, good God, good God. By the way, Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says he looked up and Jesus, who is on the right hand of the Father, guess what? He, when Jesus went to be seated on the right hand of the Father to make intercession for us, but because the Holy Ghost was in Stephen, when Stephen looked up, Jesus was standing up. That meant the Holy Ghost in Stephen had connected with God in the Son and God the Father in the heavens, and they were all tied in to what was happening with Stephen. When, those, when that sheet rock fell on me, the Holy Ghost was in me. The Holy Ghost was able to preserve me. The Holy Ghost was able to passage me through that tunnel and get me to the other side. The Holy Ghost was able to get me an audience with God the Father. The Holy Ghost was able to get me back in the body. The Holy Ghost was able to sustain me. So when I got to the hospital, I was able to minister with a broken leg. I'm trying to tell you, if the Spirit of God is in us, the promise maker is the promise keeper. Somebody give God a hand right now. Somebody thank God. Promise maker is the promise keeper. Let me move on. Listen. God said in Ezekiel, I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within men and within you and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and I will give them a heart of flesh. That was a promise that he made in the Old Testament on Pentecost. He kept the promise. He gave a new heart and then God spoke to Joel. Good God. God prophesied to Joel about the Holy Ghost and this was in the Old Testament and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. This is what Peter preached on Pentecost and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids and in those days will I pour out of my spirit in other words God made a promise and this promise was for whosoever would believe on Jesus Christ would receive the promise Holy Ghost say to your neighbor the promise maker is the promise keeper and here's the bottom line to that point. Now move on. Listen, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? If you're sitting in this house right now with a promise and that promise came from God, I need you to know you can't even breathe your last breath on this side until that promise comes to pass because the promise maker is the promise keeper. I just need three people to jump up and say, I believe God. I just need three people to do it. Say it out of your mouth. I believe God. The promise maker is the promise keeper. And I don't know about you, but I'm waiting on the fulfillment of a promise. I'm waiting on God to come through with some things that I know he told me he's going to do. But the promise maker, when you go to bed at night, when you get in bed tonight, I want you to say, Lord, I thank you that you are the promise maker and you are the promise keeper. Somebody give God the glory. Come on. Come on. Let me finish this. Be seated. I'll finish this in just a couple of minutes. Just a couple of minutes. Oh, my God. Point number two. Pentecost affirms a divided and scattered people are made one in Christ. Now, me no harm. That's the answer to racism. Did you hear what I just said? Because, see, in the Old Testament, the Jews thought they were the its. And they thought they were better than because they were chosen. Well, they were chosen, but they were not chosen to be the exclusive ones God loved. 
they were chosen to be a visible example of what it looks like to be in covenant with God. Why? So that other nations would see the difference in Israel and would then ask the question that was asked on Pentecost, what must I do to be saved? If you think God bless you because you're the only one on your block he loves, you don't understand God. If you think God opened up that door for you because you're the only one God wants to bless, you don't understand God. If God blesses you, it is always so you can be a blessing to somebody else. And if you have a selfish spirit, stop asking God for a financial blessing. If you have a selfish spirit, stop asking God to use your spiritual gifts. But if you understand that you are a vehicle by which God will reach somebody else, then you have a right to say, pour it on me, God. More, more about Jesus. More of your presence. More of your spirit so I can be a can't do it to reach somebody else. Somebody that was just as lost as I was. The reality is we all were dead in sins. We all were lost. But God, I wish I had a real church right now. But God, there's nothing I have done that deserves my salvation but the grace of God. And whatever God does for me, I want to do it for somebody else. I want to reach somebody else. I want somebody else to know joy. I want somebody else to know peace. I want somebody else to know love. And listen, as bad as a person is, that is the extent that God loves them. Did you hear what I said? If you take the depth of their plight and multiply it times eternity, that's how much God loves them. And God is looking for saints in the church to go out of the church and to be a light to a darkened, dead world. And you don't need to ask God for another thing if you're not going to give it to someone else. Listen, on the Tower of Babel, there were a group of people who decided we're going to build a tower to reach God. What was wrong with that? That sounds like a good idea to me. They're not trying to reach the devil. They want to reach God. Here's the problem. They were trying to reach God without God. You didn't get that. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. It's the same thing we do when we try to be religious. Try to make sure that we do this on this day don't do this on that day and make sure we look like this and don't look like that and make sure we do. We go through all these calisthenics trying to reach God without God. I want to tell you something. You may have broken all the commandments. Some folk focus on, well, I struggle with this. No, the Bible says if you miss any one of them, you're guilty of violating all of them. So if we have broken every commandment, but we call on the name of the Lord, I want you to know the person in the back of the line will be moved up to the front of the line. And those religious folk will be standing there watching. Because God is not looking for religious folk. He's looking for folk that were scattered that can be made one in Christ. And this is what happened on Pentecost. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. It has nothing to do with your race. It has nothing to do with your denomination. It has nothing to do with your age. It has nothing to do with your gender. I'm trying to tell you the Holy Spirit takes a scattered people and unifies them in Christ, whether we be Jews or Gentiles. What are Gentiles? A non-Jew. So anyone that's not born Jewish is a Gentile. Whether we be bond or free, we have all been made to drink into one spirit. So what does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit took a scattered population at Babel. Let's check this out. You know, God, God's got a sense of humor. He, he divided the languages so they couldn't communicate. Because they were trying to reach heaven without God. He knocked that one down. But on Pentecost, 
he took the language of the spirit he took one language and brought people together for by one spirit could God say one for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body now hear this hear this I used to hear my mother-in-law and then my wife would quote the scripture all the time all the time and then this scripture yesterday attacked me sitting at my desk listen to this stop trying to be holy without the God of holiness stop trying to be righteous without the righteous God stop trying to live for God without God not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us how are you saved I'm saved by the mercy of God because mercy has spared me from damnation mercy has spared me from death mercy has spared me from what I deserve by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost what are you saying I'm saying it is the Holy Spirit that has taken a divided people and made us one in Christ and this is how you get in Christ this is how you do it we used to think you had to get on your knees and say Jesus 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 that's what I did all that oh, yes Lord. Thank, thank you thank you thank you thank you that's that's how we thought we had to do it uh -uh. that ain't how you get no Holy Ghost now that will humble you I will be admit I will admit that will humble you and will break you down you don't have to say nothing fast you just have to say Jesus the Bible says and it shall come to pass that whosoever ever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now that same person may have rejected God. You could have spent years rejecting God, but the moment you call on the Lord, the Bible says thou shalt be saved. Anybody in the house saved? I said anybody in the house saved? Then you've called on the name of the Lord. She said all the time. And that's how, you, that's how you walk in salvation, calling on the name of the Lord. I'm going to stop right here because I, I do have another point to make, but, but I can tell some of you I'm, I'm losing you, and I don't want to lose you. Pentecost affirms the promise maker is the promise keeper. And, and what's the good news of that? Pentecost is proof. Whatever God promises, it shall come to pass. And then Pentecost affirms a divided and a scattered people are made one in Christ. And what's the good news about that? The good news is that Pentecost is proof that nobody is excluded, but whosoever will may come. Now, that will preach anywhere. You can go in a tavern and preach that. You can go in prison and preach that. You can go in the White House and preach that. Whosoever will, let them come. We used to sing a song, whosoever will. Uh, meaneth, shout, shout the sound, spread the blessed tidings all the world around. Tis a joyful news. Wherever man is found, whosoever will may come. Whosoever will, whosoever will send the proclamation over vale and hill. Tell the joyful news wherever man is found. Whosoever will may come. And God is saying on this Pentecost, I'm the promise maker. And I'm the promise keeper. And God is saying, I won't let you go down without me fulfilling what I promise. I'm going to keep my word. And Jesus said, you tarry in Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. How long, Lord? I'm not going to tell you how long. You just wait until my power comes. You got some unanswered prayers? Wait until the answer comes. Yeah, I, I called on the Lord, and I kept calling until I got an answer. I waited on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength because the promise maker is the promise keeper. And I got news for you. Some things we only have to wait one minute, and it comes. Some things we got to wait two days, and it comes. There's some things we got to wait years, but I got news for you. 
when it comes, the Lord reverses the calendar. God will take an old man and let him jump like the youth. God will do it. God will cause us to run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint because the promise maker is the promise keeper. Who in this house right now is trusting the God of Pentecost to do just what he said, to minister to you where you need it most, to answer some of your unanswered questions, to touch you where nobody else can touch you. I know you can be in a room full of folk, but you can be alone. You can be in a crowded room and be lonely because nobody understands. Nobody can tap into where you are. But the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will go right there. The Holy Ghost will meet us at the point of need. What happened at Pentecost? The promise maker became a promise keeper. A scattered people became one in Christ. Bow your heads, everybody. Father, we thank you right now. Father, we thank you. There are some desperate needs in our midst. Desperate needs. And God, you're the only one that can satisfy. You're the only one that can turn it like nobody else can. Pentecost. Pentecost. The power of the living God released not upon us, but now in us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let your spirit fall now. Right now, whether they're old or young, female, male, Black, white, doesn't matter. Calling on your name. And in 10 days, you fulfilled what Joel talked about centuries earlier. Because you can't lie. Now, God, there's some things right now I am believing you for. I'm just believing you. I'm believing you. I, I put my life on the line because the promise maker is the promise keeper. And Lord, I, some things you let it come in drips. <sighs> and every drip is a reminder that there's coming a ladder rain, an outpouring the floodgates are going to open. And I'm thanking you now. I want to thank you for the miracle you accomplished even last week. God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Somebody help me thank God. Somebody help me thank God. Pentecost is a reminder. And that everything scattered is brought into one. In the name of Jesus. Do your work, Lord. Do your work even in this house, in this campus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is a fountain filled with love. I'm not going to read all this. I just want to read just a few verses. After Jesus rode into Jerusalem, and they were saying, Hosanna, do you not know less than a week later, less than maybe five days later, they were saying, crucify him. You know why? Because they wanted a military leader that was going to overthrow the Roman government. And they thought that's what Jesus was going to do. But Jesus was introducing them to a spiritual kingdom, a kingdom that doesn't fade away. And so I want you to say, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Look at somebody and say, Jesus is my Savior. 
and I praise him. Do you really mean that? I want you to lift that wafer while I read this. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He was a horrible sight on that cross. They had stripped him of his clothes. They had beaten his skin off of his body. He was a bloody mess. And the crown of thorns to mock him. He was bleeding from his head. They had pierced him in his side. He had nails in his feet and nails in his hand. But God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased because it was through Jesus that we are now a part of God's kingdom. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Here's the verse I wanted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Close your eyes. Just think how grateful we are to Jesus for dying on the cross. This is the body of Jesus Christ that was broken for you and me to be made whole. Let us eat together. I just love him looking at Danae taking communion with her mother. Mama, do you understand that prayer changes things? You came to the church and prayed. And now your, do your beautiful daughter is sitting beside you, taking communion with you. That's why we do the triumphal procession. That's why we do the praise procession before the cross. Because it is a prophecy that victory is my destiny. This is the blood of Jesus that was shed for our salvation. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. But Jesus shed his blood. Let us drink together. Now for the next 30 seconds, just praise God from your mouth. Come on. Tell Jesus you love him. Come on, come on. Tell God, bless him. No, this should not be a struggle. This should not be a struggle to bless God with your lips. Hallelujah is the highest praise. His name is Jesus. You can say glory to God. You can say thank you, Jesus. You can say blessed be the name of the Lord. You can say the Lord is my deliverer. The Lord is my healer. Come on, open your mouth. Put it out there in the atmosphere. Tell Jesus you're a wonder. You're a way maker. You're a miracle worker. There's none like you in all the earth. I bless you. I bless you with my heart. I bless you with my soul. I adore you, God. I lift you up. For we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. I bless the Lord. I bless him. I praise him. Hallelujah. Beloved, we thank you for joining us today during this worship experience. We pray that what you've heard today, what you felt today has been a blessing to you and your family. Um, if God has inspired you today, continue to be a part of this virtual experience on this YouTube channel. You can subscribe, you can like, but we pray that you are blessed as a result of our worship, that you are encouraged as a result of the teaching, and that you're inspired by the preached word of God. God bless you and be blessed.